continuing on with section 12.3, in this example, we want to find the velocity vector, the speed, and acceleration vector of a particle that moves along the plane curve C, described by R of t equals 2 sine t over 2i plus 2 cosine t over 2j. Take a minute now and plug that into your graphing calculator to see the path. Using parametric mode on the graphing calculator, you can enter x equals 2 sine of t over 2 and y equals 2 cosine of t over 2. When you start off with a standard zoom, you see a portion of the graph displayed and you really only see half of the, of the complete curve. We can change the window so that it includes beyond just 2 pi, to, so that we can see a complete rotation. Let's make it 4 pi. And when we graph there, we see a more complete path. It is a circle with radius of 2. And then we can even zoom in to get a closer look at the, the path. We want to find the velocity vector, the speed, and the acceleration vector of a particle that moves along the plane curve C as described by this vector valued function. So here is our position vector. The velocity vector can be found by taking the derivative of each of the components. Derivative of 2 sine of t over 2 is cosine of t over 2. And the derivative of 2 cosine t over 2 is a negative sine of t over 2. So that's going to be our velocity vector. In general, for any time, the velocity vector can be found by plugging in the t into this vector valued function for velocity. The speed at any time is equal to the magnitude of the velocity vector. Now when you find the magnitude of this velocity vector, you get cosine squared of t over 2 plus sine squared of t over 2, and that is a trig identity. And remember, cosine squared u plus sine squared u is going to equal 1. So in this case, speed is constant because the magnitude of the velocity vector at any time is always going to be 1. The acceleration vector is found by taking the second derivative of that r of t vector valued function, which is equal to negative one half sine of t over 2i minus one half cosine t over 2j. Now an application involving vector valued function has to do with projectile motion. Assume that gravity is the only force acting on the projectile after it is launched. So the motion can be represented by the xy coordinate system within the, with the origin as a point on the Earth's surface, as shown in this figure. So imagine you're projecting an object into the air with an initial height, and you project it into the air, launch it into the air. The object is going to go up, and it's going to eventually come back down due to gravity and hit back on the Earth. Now the, the height and the range all depend on your initial height to begin with, the initial velocity, and that angle of inclination that where the object is being thrown. Notice that the velocity vectors that are sketched here, velocity vector at zero, velocity vector at t sub one, and velocity vector at t sub two are all tangent to the path. The acceleration vectors are all going straight down. That's acceleration due to gravity. And in this case, acceleration due to gravity is constant. So no matter where you are on the path, that acceleration vector is going to be the same. We can use this position function for a projectile motion. Neglecting air resistance, the path of a projectile launched from an initial height h with an initial speed v sub zero, that's like your initial velocity, and angle of elevation theta is described by the vector valued function. R of t equals v sub zero cosine theta t i plus in brackets h plus v sub zero sine theta p minus one half g t squared j. And g is acceleration due to gravity. 
if our height is given in feet, then the acceleration due to gravity is going to be 32. And if your height is given in meters, I believe that's going to be a 9.8. Here's an example that we can use along with that formula for projectile motion. A baseball is hit three feet above ground level at 100 feet per second and at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the ground, as shown in this figure. Find the maximum height reached by the baseball. Will it clear a 10 foot high fence located 300 feet from home plate? And also we want to find the range. There is a lot going on here. So you want to identify which of these values are going to be useful in setting up the model equation. Our original height is 3 feet, so h will be 3. The angle is 45 degrees. Now what we don't know here is your initial velocity. Actually, we are, we are given the initial velocity of 100 feet per second. So that's going to be your v sub 0. With h equals 3, v sub 0 equals 100, and theta equals 45, you have everything you need to plug into the formula for projectile motion. So again, you're given h equals 3, v sub 0 is equal to 100, and theta is equal to 45. By plugging those values in and using g equals 32 feet per second per second, we get the following equation. This is your v sub 0 cosine theta ti plus h plus v sub 0 sine theta t minus 16t squared j. You can simplify this equation by evaluating the cosine of pi over 4 and the sine of pi over 4, and you get... 50 square root of 2 ti plus 3 plus 50 square root of 2 t minus 16 t squared j. So this is our vector valued function which would represent the path of the baseball. Now what I'd like to do is show you how you can sketch this path using a graphing calculator. In parametric mode on your graphing calculator, go to the y equals button and enter x equals 50 square root of 2t. Make sure that square root doesn't go over the t. And y equals 3 plus 50 square root of 2t minus 16t squared. If you do a standard zoom here, you're not going to see much. You do see that the ball begins at 3 feet high up in the air and you see it looks like it goes straight off. That's because in a standard zoom you're restricted to your window to be from negative 10 to positive 10 in the x and y direction. So if we change our window to go from a t min equals 0 to a t max equals 6.2, this is in seconds so that should be fine. I'm going to change the x max, how far the ball goes, to about uh, let's say 350 feet. We do want to see if it clears a, a 10 foot fence that's 300 feet away. So we're going to adjust the x max to be 350. And I can make the x scale to be by 50. The y min, uh, y max, I'm going to I'm assume it's going to go higher than 10 feet in the air. And let's say I change it to 100 for the y max and change the scale to 10. We may need to make some adjustments after that, but that should give us a decent looking graph. Okay, we see the graph, the ball goes up in the air and then it does eventually come back down. And you can press trace and see at t equals zero, the location is zero three, that's three feet high above home plate. And then if we find different values of the time, t equals one, the ball is 70 feet in a horizontal direction, 57 feet up high. T equals 2. You see it's 141.4 feet and 80.42 feet up high in the air. And at say t equals 3, t equals 3, it's 212 feet from home plate up 71 feet in the air. And let's see what happens at t equals 4. It's 282 feet from home plate up almost 30 feet in the air. So that we get a decent 
um, picture of what that ball is doing. It's that, that baseball is get, gets launched into the air and it's eventually going to come back down. Part of this question is to find the maximum height reached by the ball. And we can possibly take a guess and estimate that maximum height, but to find out exactly where that maximum height is, we need to consider the velocity vector. The tangent vector at that highest point is going to have zero for the vertical component. If you have a vector that's tangent to the path right at that maximum height, you're going to be going over some number of units, going up or down zero. So it's important, it's necessary to determine the velocity vector. Set the, the J component of velocity to equal zero, and that's going to help us determine when it reaches its maximum height. So the velocity vector is the derivative of R of T, and we want to find out where that second component is zero. We're going to set 50 square root of 2 minus 32T, all of this equal to zero. At that point, you are going to have a tangent vector that's going to be your highest maximum height where that vertical component is zero. So the maximum height occurs when that y prime is equal to zero, and you'll see that that is at t equals 25 square root of 2 over 16. Let's check that on the graphing calculator. Okay, by tracing and typing in 25 second square root of 2, I'm going to close the parentheses and divide by 16, That at that time, the the ball is at its highest point. And notice the location here. X is equal to 156.25, where Y is equal to 81.125. 81.125 is the maximum height. If you were going to draw a velocity vector at that point, where T equals 25 square root of 2 over 16, the horizontal component would be 0. So it would be a horizontal tangent vector. Okay, again, that's approximately 2.21 seconds, and when you plug that back into the original position vector valued function, you get the x and the y, where the y is equal to 649 over 8, which is approximately 81 feet in the air. And again, going back to the calculator, you can see about 81.125 feet in the air at its maximum height. The second part of this question is is asking about um, if it's going to clear that 10-foot fence that's 300 feet away. The ball is 300 feet from where it was hit when the x portion of the position function is equal to 300. So go back to the original vector valued function and let the x portion equal 300, and you can solve that for t. You get t equals three, oh, 3 times the square root of 2, or about 4.24 seconds. Let's go to the graphing calculator and find the location at that time. Okay, I'm, again, I'm pressing trace. I'm going to type in 3 square root of 2, close the parentheses, and equals. Okay, at that time, about 4.24 seconds, the x is equal to 300, meaning you're 300 feet from home base, and the y is equal to 15. That means it's 15 feet up in the air. So it will certainly clear that 10-foot high fence. Okay, so the height of the ball at that time, you can plug it back into the original equation to get 15 feet, so the ball does clear that 10-foot fence for a home run. Okay, the last part of this section is finding the range. Going back to your original vector-valued function, calculate the range. I'm going to stop the video here, and for the next video, I'll begin with this problem.